very warm welcome uh, Sri Harsha and uh, Rahul. Happy Diwali and what a day to have you with us to discuss your public issue. Uh, lots of eyes on uh, the numbers. I want to start by asking you why this IPO uh, now? The valuation seems to be at the same level as your last funding round. Take our viewers through what you intend to do with the proceeds, including uh, the portion that you perhaps have marked for uh, growth strategies in the future. Thank you so much, Siddharth, for having us in front of uh, in front of your viewers. Happy Diwali to everyone listening in. Uh, it is a big, big milestone for us in the company's journey, and it's our next phase as a the company. As our as recording for question, in progress. Why the IPO? I think uh, it's not something that is sudden. Uh, it was always one of the most logical next steps for us as a company uh, after having raised, you know, institutional capital over these years. And for us, we were just waiting for the right time to be ready to do that. And over the last two, three years, as we've, um, you know, shaped the business in a way that we were feeling excited about, when we looked inward, we were feeling excited about how we were going about, um, you know, the overall progress of the business. All of this coming together meant that we felt like now we are ready for our next step uh, in our life as a public company. It is a broad, we understand it's a huge responsibility of broadening the shareholders, stakeholders, everyone as you do this. So everything on our mind was readiness. And when we felt it in the bones, we said, let's go. Uh, Sri uh, four times a year at least uh, to deal with the press, <laughs> to deal with analysts, to deal with con calls. So I guess you are also mentally uh, prepared for that and in your daily and quarterly schedules, you will have to keep that in mind. But I want to uh, uh, take our viewers through some of the headlines that have been generated since yesterday when you uh, spoke to the press, uh, all of us, about this. And this is quick commerce. A uh, uh, couple of headlines say that quick commerce uh, will be bigger than uh, food delivery. You are also quoted as saying that uh, quick commerce cannot uh, win uh, uh, via cash. Put that in context for our viewers because this is one of the key things in terms of future growth that a lot of investors will be looking forward to. Oh, Siddharth, I think uh, already for the, the quick commerce business in the last quarter that we published was 40% of the food delivery business. So it's at meaningful scale and it is growing at a much faster pace than the food delivery business. Uh, also because of you know how large the category is and uh, how well everyone in the category is doing we're doing very well and the coming together of all of these means that we do believe that quick commerce will surpass food delivery in the next few years it's not going to be very long it's just a function of how large both the businesses are relatively and how much they're growing in relation rahul if i may ask you to uh, uh, expand on that answer in terms of quick commerce what's the uh, strategy that you have in mind because the space has uh, other strong uh, players. How do you intend to sort of uh, invest in uh, ramping this up and what are the key metrics that you will consider uh, for this business? Uh, sure. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, wishing you and your viewers a very happy Diwali. Uh, I think uh, what we are looking at the overall space is that consumers are reimagining what the future of quick commerce should be on an everyday basis. Uh, there are you know more categories getting added on a daily basis there are more skus getting added and we do believe that we uh, have to keep redesigning the format of the business every quarter to meet the consumer expectations towards that uh, one thing that we have done in the recent past is to increase the size of our dark stores uh, we have doubled the availability of number of skus in these dark stores over the last 12 months and we are also experimenting with larger format dark stores which could be two to three x the size of a normal dark store so these are the various uh, formats in which we are going to experiment to meet the ever-growing consumer uh, needs uh, in this business. Uh, thanks for that, Raul. Shreya, uh, coming back to you, other analysis uh, of uh, your performance and plans, and I'm quoting one more, says that if Swiggy is to outpace Zomato in the coming decade, incremental gains in market share or marginal growth will not be enough the company will need to deliver new products that expand its total addressable uh, market because you've been so hands-on when it comes to uh, product. Uh, what are your plans uh, 
and how would you answer this uh, question that has been raised so yesterday also we were asked how are you going to gain share in food delivery how are you going to gain share in quick commerce and we actually answered the same only execution is not going to be enough execution and innovation both are going to be incredibly important and i think we are ready for it i think we are firing this year at least uh, on the innovation spectrum we've launched a slew of new things and with most innovation some of them work some of them don't but uh, we have it in our dna and we should count on our ability to deliver on this promise in the next few years but i totally agree yeah. with the statement that only execution is not going to be enough execution innovation both are important uh what is the innovation pipeline looking like at this stage what can you um, share with our viewers as to what your future uh, thinking is in this regard yeah i'll give you maybe a few peeks into the future uh, that we think should exist as well i think something that we launched a month back three weeks back is a quick commerce version of food delivery uh, where you know we've been over the last 2 3 years the country has gotten more and more used to 10 minute delivery of essentials and insight was maybe food delivery starting to feel a little slow at 30 minutes and we said hey can we actually challenge ourselves because there are so many restaurants across the country who are able to prepare food really fast can we take all the learnings from quick commerce and deliver even food really really fast and we launched an initiative called bolt where now every fast prep uh, restaurant like a chaios a starbucks restaurants like these that give you food very very fast anyway uh we've converted them into a 10 minute uh restaurant where any consumer close by can get their food in 10 minutes so now that's one big pilot we we believe it'll open up new consumption occasions and use cases even on the instamart side you know in an industry first we launched pharmacy as a pilot in the last week uh in the quick commerce business so and i could go on and on but i think this year the wheels are turning really really well for the innovation pipeline and we remain quite excited uh i have to uh, share this with you and our viewers that just uh, uh, earlier this week uh, the boss of uh, india's and one of the world's largest stock exchanges uh, said that india because of its digital backbone and the entire uh, regulatory framework is almost ready for a real time settlement i kind of when you say 10 minutes food delivery it's a, as instant as it can be but what about your revenue and your profitability because uh, uh beyond the plans a lot of investors will be looking at uh, your forecast with regard to when you see uh, break even and profitability being achieved considering what the other rival in the market has been doing as far as numbers are concerned sure i can take that uh, so last year uh, we did 35000 crores in our overall gross order value across the three uh, large businesses of food delivery quick commerce and the dining out vertical Uh, we have grown at a kgr of 32% over the last 3 years so very very strong you know top line growth uh, this has also led to our food delivery business becoming profitable on a fully loaded uh, ebitda basis uh, you know uh, and uh, this this year on quarter 1 we delivered a 0.8% positive ebitda our contribution margin has been expanding uh, both in the food delivery business as well as uh, in the quick commerce business our monetization levers have started to kick in Uh, meaningfully uh, especially the advertising engine uh, in both the businesses is firing really strong uh, for us right now our uh, focus on variable cost as well as fixed cost has meant that we are able to deliver both uh, contribution margin gains as well as operating leverage uh, in each of the businesses uh, so yes while we can't give specific guidance and more of that we will share during our quarterly earnings uh, releases uh, we are very very uh, you know hopeful of the journey ahead having you know already uh, turned one business uh, fully profitable now uh, for those retail investors who may not have sort of poured through the details uh, would it be possible for you to uh, explain your current uh, percentage contribution in terms of your overall revenue mix and some numbers specifically about how your ad business has been performing and the growth that you have seen sure so in the food delivery business uh, our contribution margin was 6.4% in uh, quarter 1 Uh, and uh, this has uh, seen a consistent increase uh, from you know close to say 3% uh, you know 18 months ago uh, and uh, therefore the result in the uh, ebitda that came in at 0.8% in our quick commerce business which uh, went through its uh, journey of investment cycle the expansion that we did on our supply chain network meant that uh, from a negative 23% contribution margin in fi23 we went down to negative uh, 6% in fi24 
and further down to negative 3% in uh, the first quarter of uh, 2025. So a very, very strong trajectory as a result of the, uh, both as I said, uh, focus on revenue as well as the uh, variable costs. On advertising, uh, we have seen uh, in the restaurant and the food delivery business, a widening base of the restaurant partners participating on our platform. And uh, in the uh, quick commerce business, uh, we are seeing significant demand from the uh, brand partners, FMCG companies, uh, our direct-to-consumer brands uh, who are wanting to reach out uh, and you know uh, focus on their uh, reaching out to their set of consumers. So a very, very broad-based, uh, I would say, participation. And we do expect this uh, to continue in the future. Uh, one more follow-up, Rahul, and this is to do with some commentary on uh, how you have reduced uh, the OFS component of the issue. Uh, care to expand on uh, uh, why that happened and what's the broader thinking there? Sure. So our largest investor, you know, process group, uh, they ha had to come below the regulatory threshold of 25%. As we have increased our primary offering by 20%, uh, they had to, you know, uh, they chose to reduce their OFS, uh, you know, selling component. To come below the regulatory threshold so that was the only change uh, apart from process group uh, as you would have seen uh, most of the uh, you know ofs sellers are the early investors uh, who have come in the journey uh, right from 2015 uh, along with the company okay. uh Shri Arsha, uh, you know i was reading about the first uh, round of funding that uh, uh, you received and how you went about it and today as uh, your early investors are likely to pocket between three to 35 times, uh, uh, what's the broader message uh, that you can share with us? Did you ever imagine that you will be able to do justice to some of your earliest backers? And are you happy with the kind of returns that you are being able to provide them at this stage? Uh, very, very happy about it, uh, Siddharth. I think I believed in it, but uh, seeing it adds another layer of belief and that makes it really, really sweet. I mean, I truly felt it when I told them this can become bigger and it's really exciting to see that come to life. Uh, I come back to quick commerce and you must have seen reportage in the recent days that uh, small mm -hmm. Kirana stores are facing the brunt of uh, quick uh, commerce and there is already some amount of uh, regulatory pressure in some ways, policy pressure that uh, is being created, might be created. In terms of risk, do you see any policy uh, action likely happening and that posing a risk to the overall quick commerce space, not just specifically you? So, uh, see, A, we are in touch with the regulators, right? And uh, we have been in consistently in touch with them, uh, explaining to them the overall ecosystem benefit that we are bringing to the to bear, uh, whether it's, you know, the farm gate procurement where we are eliminating, you know, middlemen and getting access to, you know, fair pricing to our farmer community or the supply chain investments that we have made in warehousing as well as the dark store and thousands of jobs having been created there. Uh, we have added 107,000 delivery partner jobs in the last one year. So the overall ecosystem benefit uh, that our domestic homegrown consumer tech company has been able to demonstrate and you know unlock real value across the stakeholders is something that uh, you know uh, I think the regulators and the government of the day is really proud of uh, you know, uh, this having come from a domestic innovation. I think on the Kirana side, uh, last year we acquired a business called Link. So Link is an authorized distributor of FMCG companies selling to tens of thousands of Kiranas on a daily and weekly basis. So we are uh, currently, you know, working with uh, more than 20 FMCG, you know, large brand partners of ours. And we are helping now Kiranas unlock uh, real time, you know, inventory ordering, uh, getting them access to speedier deliveries, better fill rates. As you know that, uh, you know, the Kirana stores do suffer with uh, low fill rates because of the distribution challenges that exist in the current network. So what we are trying to do is to bring Kiranas the you know benefits of technology that we have used on the consumer side in the B2B side and uh, get them access to you know promotions and discounts from the brands directly sourced so that uh, they can cater to the neighborhood that they service to. So I think bringing them to a level playing field is the you know, need of the hour and we are committed to uh, doing that uh, through uh, our uh, link business. Okay. One final question to you, Sri Harsha, before I let you go. Uh, and this is to uh, get you to address those retail investors. And I make that conscious choice because of the kind of audience that we also have who looked at the Hyundai uh, IPO. Uh, that's a company that's invested for decades in India. Uh, they look at you in terms of a story that we are all proud of uh, 
homegrown uh, story at the cutting edge of uh, the intermix of digital technologies. To them, uh, in the recent couple of years, they have invested in uh, growth stories and looked beyond losses on a balance sheet. Uh, if there were retail investors who were right now in this conversation and putting that question to you, should they invest on growth uh, or should they only strictly go by uh, the ink on the balance sheet in terms of the promise that Swiggy holds for them? How would you respond? Yeah, I think at, at the high level, anyone who's considering an investment in Swiggy should be excited about the idea of investing into consumption in India at scale. And that's a secular growth story. That's not going away anywhere over the next one, two years, uh, one, two decades. I think the next two decades are all about this upper power of India consuming more and more and that base itself growing. And Swiggy is one way to uh, take a bet on, let's say, that broader story. The next one, if you have to think about, are you betting on growth? Are you betting on profitability? I think um, even if you look at how the business is going, the business is a sum of many parts. The food delivery business is growing steadily and has demonstrated profitability and we expect it only to increase in the next few years. And the quick commerce business is in various, uh, is in a different stage where it is going through hyper growth. I think uh, what I would maybe ask, you know, your viewers, potential shareholders of the company, to take a long view on, let's say, India's consumption uh, story over the next one, two decades, and maybe look at, let's say, how we've been able to create categories as well as convert them to uh, profitability with the first time in uh, food delivery. And I hope they can believe that we can do it many more times in the future. Yeah. Maybe if I one just way. to add on that, maybe yeah. if I just add on to that, see, many of our prospective retail shareholders are also, you know, Swiggy's core consumers. Right, and think uh, the value unlock that we do on an everyday basis, the convenience that we provide to them on an everyday basis. Uh, I think uh, we, we do expect that we will get the same support uh, to, uh, you know, of them in the public markets. Well, you know, I, I put that same question to the Hyundai management when they were uh, up for the issue. And I said, do retail shareholders uh, stand the chance of getting a discount because they are going to invest in the company and keep buying your cars? I posed that same question to you, Sriyarsha. Any possibility that there might be some preferential treatment for uh, Swiggy orders who are also retail shareholders? So we are looking at that aspect. Uh, if regulatory, you know, uh, you know, considerations are there, we will definitely try to give you know more value benefits to our retail shareholders, uh, you know, considering the regulations currently in there. Absolutely, we will need that. Uh, one quick final uh, point to you, Shreya. I was reading analysis where uh, one commentator said that. Uh, for reaching your valuation, there was a sort of 30-70 mix uh, in terms of if 10 or 11 rupees uh, uh, is the valuation, you spent almost 3.6 or 3.7 to get there and there was a comparison with others. Is that a fair uh, comparison that you spent far more to reach where you have? I think it's an unfair comparison, firstly, Siddha. And the reason is that a fair comparison would make note of not only what the cash that you've raised, but also what you've diluted uh, in pursuit of uh, m and As all your viewers may realize, every time there is an m and you are acquiring a company, you're diluting your stake again. So any long-term shareholder should look at not just the funds raised, but also how much has been spent in, term, in pursuit of mergers and acquisitions that dilute the stock. For us, uh, we have diluted less than 1.5% of the entire company in 10 years in pursuit of mergers and acquisitions. So if you look at only one headline number, it is misleading and is not an accurate representation of uh, efficiency because that is only one. It is a homegrown, organically built company, Swiggy. So if you're comparing to someone who has been a prolific m and uh, you know, driver, I mean, our peer has done a lot of m and in the past, an order of magnitude more than us. So I think you would have to look at this and that to get a more balanced view of uh, overall efficiency, which is beneficial for the long-term shareholder. Uh, you have uh, $200 million worth of ESOPs uh, that I believe have been uh, granted to you. And I'm sure there's a significant pot for your senior management as well. Um, uh, how should the general observer look at that number? Maybe I can take that. Uh, so earlier this year, when uh, you know the board uh, approved the grants to it, 
60 percent of those grant of those grants are linked to share price appreciation which means that uh, the management team will not you know will only be able to vest those grants if there's a 50 percent to 100 percent increase in our share price so there is a complete i would say uh, you know a lock in of both the shareholder returns as well as the management incentives that are uh, there on the on the table all right uh Sri Arsha, uh and uh Rahul, thank you very much uh, for your time with us today. I wish you all the very best, uh, your public issue and this conversation happening as it does on uh, Diwali. Uh, thank you very much, and we hope to connect with you every other quarter. With that, it's a wrap on this conversation with the founder and management of Swiggy. That's an issue that's coming up. We'll slip into a short break. More conversations coming up this Diwali day. Do stay tuned.